we are here today with uh, Numa, a Kurdish activist from Slemani who have made herself very famous through her videos from a very young age and she has invited us today to uh, do a quick interview, talk a little bit about her activism and see why uh, she started with this and how it's going up throughout the years. Welcome Numa. Thank you so much, I'm so happy to be on your channel. Um, I'm very interested to know because I've followed you for a couple of years now and I've seen you from being very very young until now. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself and why you started with this, how you came to start with this. Yeah, well my name is Nima Neriman and I'm 13 years old. Basically I was a kid and I used to love watching cartoons, you know, on the TV. And like every time, even like in the middle of like the best part of the cartoon, the electricity would turn off. And I would be really bothered by that. So one day when I was watching it and then the electricity turned off, I got so mad. And then my sister said, hey, why don't we record something since you always get mad and you're always, yeah. And then I told my sister, yeah, let's do it. And like, we have a room back there. And I told her, yeah, let's record there. And then I started like saying the government is bad, why does the electricity turn off? I was so mad about it. And then we decided to post it on my mom's Facebook. We asked her and she said, yeah, you can post it. And then we posted it. Basically, my dad came back that day and he came back from work. He saw it, he was mad. He was like, hey, why did you guys post that and stuff? And I was like, no, I wanna do this because why does the electricity have to turn off every time? This is something bad. Like we pay the electricity bill and it still turns off. So that's when I started like wanting to record stuff. And how old were you at this incident? It was 2015. So I was like four years old around then. And um, like you told me that your dad came home and was a little bit angry or upset yeah. about why was he angry, do you know? And did you understand any problems behind what you did or how did you feel back then? I felt happy that I did that because honestly, this problem is everywhere. It's not just my house, it's like in the whole country. And I knew why my dad was mad. He wasn't mad that I was like talking bad about the government. Uh, he was mad because like uh, I posted something and it's my face, you know, like parents usually when you post something like without your parents, like without my dad's permission, it's not something like you should do. But I was so angry back then and like I felt like that's what I had to do. Because, you know, it happened so often, every moment. It wasn't something that it was just normal, like once. It happened every time. And, and like uh, being four years old and posting a video about electricity and yeah. cartoon, you're not able to watch your cartoon <laughs> in peace. Did people take you seriously or was it more like a joke, a funny thing? At first, at first, uh, when I posted it, people like thought it was funny and cute because, you know, a little kid posting things. But then, like, as I started to make more videos, I told my sister, let's make a second video because, like, we have to. And then I told my dad uh, when he came home, that's what I want to do. And thankfully, he supported me. Uh, so basically, we recorded our second video. It's like outside. And... I talked about how like this is bad and the electricity, the water, there's no water and everything. And we posted it. Then people started like really noticing me and I started like blowing up. And then like uh, TV channels, they started coming to like interview, like yeah, doing the same thing. And then basically I, like, I started getting a little bit more famous and popular and people started taking me more seriously and in a cute way. Like they weren't like, oh, this kid is mad and stuff. But now that I've grown up, I think I'm starting to do my things like a little bit in a more serious way. Cause back then I was just a kid. It was like supposed to be in a like cute way. But now I think I'm older, so I'm doing my job more seriously. And between the first time you posted a video and when you actually started to get a little bit of attention for real, how long was that period? Was it like a year or half year or how long was it? No, when I posted it, I started like getting the attention. Every time I started posting more and more, same. It, it Like whenever I posted, my views would get like higher and higher. So it was very fast? Like yeah. Okay, okay. 
And um, you told me a little bit that your father didn't support you at the beginning, or he was mad about. No, when he like he was mad. Sorry, I didn't let you finish it. But when he came, he was mad. He was like, "Why did you guys post that?" But then when I told him that, like, cause he knows about the problem too. Like sometimes he's watching a movie, like that happens. So he started. That's when I told him I want to do that, and then he started supporting me. Okay, and and uh, besides from your father, you have had full support from your family yeah, my and your friends. Family have supported me and my friends, yes. Have you not had any like people being worried about you or, yeah, or yeah. And did they support you or did they tell you to not do it anymore? Well basically my grandma like she supported me but she was like worried. I you know because in the past like people for standing up against the government they've been like threatened and killed and stuff. So my grandma she was worried and she told me, like, she supported me. She was like, I support you, but, like, I want you to stop and stuff. But then I was like, no, this is what I want to do. Like, this is something I actually have a passion for. Yeah. And because I don't think people who watch this video truly understand, like, you told a little bit about the difficulties doing these kind of things. But for real, like, can you explain a little bit what kind of... You were very young, so maybe you didn't know back then, but now when you're a little bit older, yeah. like what dif difficulties can you face when you do things like this? Well, basically, uh, thank God that I haven't like faced like really big difficulties, but I, I I'll say that I've we've been threatened before, like, and like they've asked us, like the government stuff, some people that like uh, have like, I don't know how to say this in English, but this Latian here, basically, They've told us uh, we're gonna like, for example, give you a good house, like an apartment, a car, and everything if you stop. Mm. But me personally, I don't like that's being selfish only for me because a lot of people in our country are facing the same problems. So why only for me? That's selfish. I believe that that's selfish. And I said, no, we've been threatened before. Like they've told my dad, they've threatened my dad, but those are pretty much the difficulties. But I think as you get older, like it's gonna get more difficult. Right now I'm a little bit young. So that's why it's not like, like yeah. they're not doing much about it. But I think as you get older, you are gonna get so you think it's the age that yeah. is the difference between you and other people? Yes. Okay. Um, a lot of people in this country have moved to like other countries, mm -hmm. like let's say Sweden, UK, to like, you know, stand up for themselves and talk about the problem. But if they would have done it here, like personally, I know some people that like they've been threatened, they're like family, some some of their family have been kidnapped, so they had to move to another country and mm -hmm. talk about their problems, yeah. The thing you told me about the people trying to bribe you to stop, yeah. um, like I can imagine the answer, but can you tell me a little bit, do you feel, do you regret anything or do you feel still feel that there was the right choice to keep going? I do not regret one thing. I still think that it's the right choice and I'm still going to keep going until everything goes well. Um, so, uh, one of the uh, criticisms that your family have faced um, when you was a very young girl is that um, people saying, why do your parents let you involve yourself in politics? Yeah. Um, how did you face those uh, criticisms? Basically, there were, like, at first, because me, I don't read, like, uh, right now I've grown up, so I read some of my comments, reply to them. Mostly they're good comments, but, like, uh, when I was a kid, people were saying that my family, they're using me, basically, for money, which is totally not true. And I was, like, I was laughing about it because they're, they're saying that my childhood was not, like, a good childhood, and I'm, I'm just, like, putting myself in politi politics, like, as I like as I was born people that's what they said but me I've had the best childhood that's what I'm gonna say toys and toys and food everything my dad is giving me everything I want and he's asked me multiple times even throughout like our journey like 2018 19 every year he asks me if you still want to keep going if you don't and I still tell him I want to keep going this is a good thing I want to keep going and I love my job and I'm gonna keep going um, 
how do you feel that your career has affected you as a person and what what I mean is like for example if you wouldn't have done this what would you do today but like what, or in the future what would your job be what was what what was your dream except from this like you understand what I mean yeah yeah, yeah. I do. honestly honestly this was my dream from the start okay. from the beginning but still I would like be a leader you know I take care of people and what I want to be when I grow up is be a leader president I want to be a good leader if I don't become a president like you know if it doesn't happen I want to be a good leader and I've always wanted to like you know take care of people get do good for people so yeah okay. um, today or in the future do you see yourself do anything else than politics like, do you have any hobbies? Do you sport or <laughs> do you? Yeah, I do have hobbies. I do have hobbies. Uh, football. football. Like, yeah, football, not as, not as in American football. Like, just yeah. soccer. Yeah, football. <laughs> yeah. I love playing it and watching it. Uh, but honestly, for the future, I see myself just becoming a good leader. That's it. I want to become a leader. So I don't see anything else. No, I get it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to, since I'm into football as well, which team do you support? Basically, I'm not going to say that. Listen, I'm not going to say that because if I do, if I do, I don't mind saying it. Later, I'm going to tell you. Okay, but later. yeah, I, I don't want to say it because people, people, if, okay. for example, let's say Messi or Ronaldo, if I, let's say, if I say one of them, mm -hmm. the people who like are the fan of the opposite one are going to attack me. Okay. And you know that. I'll tell you that later, though. As long as you say it later. Yeah, I'll say it later. Um, all right. So if we talk a little bit about uh, my experience, because I've just come to Kurdistan and I... Uh, my like uh, journey here was about seeing the country uh, and explore both its good parts and its uh, bad parts. And I feel really that Kurdistan is very beautiful. It's an amazing community, and I love like the the people here and everything. I love most of it. But the things I've seen that I'm very disappointed at. For instance, one of them are um, people being poor. I feel that people are poor here. Yeah. Uh, and I feel that since last time I came here, it's been even worse. I was here last time, 2009, 10. I have that feeling, I don't know if it's true, but I have feeling that it's been worse since then. Yeah. Um, what, what can you say about the, the, the like people being poor here in your community? Is it a problem and how? First of all, I'd like to say that I love Kurdistan, the country, everything. It's like, in my opinion, it's the most, like, it's a region. It's not a country yet. That's what they say. But personally, I think it's a country. And I think it's the most beautiful country in the world, like the mountains and everything. But the problem is the payments, the payments are not, like, coming at time. Like, you get what I mean? The government doesn't, like, give the money every month. It should be every month, right? Yeah. They give it, like... In once in three months, that's what they do, which is something that's why many people are poor. Like, for instance, the teachers they weren't getting paid, so they decided like not to teach. You get what I mean? They protested against the government and everything, and they weren't being paid for months. But then, like, they started like paying them, and the teachers got back to their job. But I think the problem is going to get worse and worse, it's going to happen more often. Yeah. What I, what I wanted to talk about more is like, for example, when you're driving in a car, you're sitting in a car and suddenly it comes people begging for money at the windows or, or cleaning your windows and, and, I, and you know, the, the, are those people, people who haven't get paid or are they actually even lower class that they are maybe homeless? No, no, they're maybe homeless and stuff because the people who aren't getting, like, getting paid, they don't usually go around and begging, but they sit at their own house, you know, they're sad. You know, sometimes, honestly, I've been to stores before, and, like, I've seen, like, fathers not being able to buy their kids stuff, which has made me really sad. And those are the type of people who are not getting paid. The ones who are begging, I think they're just, like, homeless and, yeah. So there is poor and there is very poor. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, one thing that actually affected me here in Kurdistan was that, for example, when I was in Duhok uh, visiting the Yezidis, yeah. uh, I really felt like in my heart ashamed that me from Sweden having everything I want and then there is these people living like this and what really made me sad and happy was how happy they were. Like kids being so happy, happy, happy but having so little things and I feel ashamed 
what do you think is like things that needs to be done in order to work against this? First of all, first of all, the system of education here in Kurdistan is really bad. Like they they teach you, let's say they teach you one plus one is two, right? But they don't teach you that two is greater than one. They don't teach you like we need to be united. You get it? Mm. They don't teach you that. And I think every child needs to have the opportunity to have education. Sadly, sadly, kids, kids, and I know personally, I know lots of kids in Slemani here. I've seen it like some of them are even my friends, to be honest. But they've quit school. They've quit school to work to support their family, which this, this is not good. And I think, like, the government needs to do something about this. Like, every single child needs to learn. They have to have the opportunity to learn. Okay, so it's education that you feel is there? Yeah. Okay. Another thing I felt, uh, like, ashamed of or, or disappointed of was, especially in Zahu and Duhok, I could see how people, uh, also here in Slimani and other places, but especially in Duhok and Zahu, how people throw water bottles in the environment, plastic, yeah. like in the, in, have you been in Zahu? Not as you not as yet, no. Uh, like there is uh, water. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know, I know. And it was filled with water bottles. Like water is such a beautiful thing. Exactly. It can make a city so beautiful or, or the nature so beautiful. But still, people like throw things in. How can we work against or work for so that people understand environment thinking? Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. This. First of all, this is like not something good. I've seen personally, I've made many videos about that. So that like campaigns and everything, I've participated in many, just so people could stop throwing things. And I think, I think, cause the, like in other countries, like you guys mentioned earlier, like in Sweden, like you have to pay if you throw something, like throw like, you know, cigarettes. Cause many people do that too. I've seen it here. Uh, you have to pay, right? And I think that's what the government needs to do. Who uh, needs to do? Whoever, whoever does that, they need to like, to, um, like sue them. Like, yeah, you go. So out. like the police have some yeah, kind of punishment system. Yes, they need yeah. to punish them. Exactly. Okay. Um, and the last thing that I have think about is probably many, many more things, but yeah. but is the how people look at animals and how they treat animals. Yeah. Uh, you heard it before. We talked about like. For example, wild dogs in in Sweden or in Europe, uh, every dog is a home dog, yeah. you know, a, yeah, well, a pet. Exactly. So um, there is no attack on on civilians. I heard by people here that ah, oh, but they attack people, probably because they're scared. They're sc exactly. Yeah, That's like what I said. there is no difference from dogs from here and dogs in Europe. I think so. Exactly. So why do they not attack people in Europe? You understand what I mean? Yeah, I do. Uh, how do you think? What do you, what do you want? What are you doing for the animals, and how do you think we should work for them? Me, basically, I love animals. Every single animal, I love. Like I even like I'm okay. Cockroaches, I'm scared of them, but still, they're insects. Yeah, but still, like I don't actually like when I you know kill them or anything, because like every single animal is here for a reason. Snakes, yeah. snakes. Like people, I've seen a lot of people here kill snakes, which is bad. You shouldn't kill snakes. Snakes, like you know, they dig holes in the mud so the water like you know when it rains it goes in so every animal has a use and my family and I'm gonna be honest yeah my aunts like not my like not my parents or my sisters like they love animals too but my aunts and everything they say oh if you go close to the dog let's say the wild dog they're gonna bite you but that's because they've been hurt before like kids they throw like rocks at them which is bad like that's why I think nobody, nobody should harm animals. And whoever harms animals, they should be punished because, like, they don't, like, they can't talk. You get what I mean? And you should always help animals out. It's a good deed. Uh, always feed them. Never hurt them. If you're scared of the animal, just, like, don't show that you're scared too because they're going to think that you have harm from them. So, like, just don't get close to them. That's it. But all in all, you should love animals so now I mentioned my top three priorities that I've seen it at least how, how about you what would you say is top three priorities that needs to be like this yeah 
And you can take mine too, but if you have any others. <laughs> education. Law. Like, you, you get what I mean? Like, the system of education. Mm. The system of the government. Like, that's all of it. Mm. But education, for me, that's like the top. Mm. That's the top one. There are many other things, like you said. Mm. The payments need to be on time and law. What do you yeah. mean with law? By law, I mean, for example, as we mentioned, if the law needs to do something about people like, for example, throwing, like, okay. I, that's not copying you, believe me. No, no. But what I mean is if people throw trash on the ground, the law needs to do something about it. They even, they either need to do community service mm -hmm. or like pay, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and to be honest, I haven't seen it myself, but, but my mother told me that a while ago you posted on your social media about uh, trees that you, that you were planting. Oh yeah. yeah. And I want to know, like, why, and uh, I can imagine why, but like, what, what was the background behind it, and how is it going today, like, what happened to Basically, when I was six, I think six, okay, uh, five or six, I wanted to, like, plant trees, you know, because uh, across from us, it was, like, all, you know, like, I even, I like my English, but, you know, like, the yeah. spiky things. Spiky, yeah. yeah. They were there and kids, you know, they were going and it was sticking. I mean, nobody was doing anything about it. So I was like, since there are no trees, let's plant trees. I told my dad, we got six trees and we planted each one of them. If you want later, we can go because we made that place a garden. Mm -hmm. Me and my grandma, we even made a video about it. We made, like, we made it a garden. I'll show you later. Okay. And the trees, they've grown. Uh, I think they were like apple trees, like, not apple trees, orange trees and stuff. Mm -hmm. But... Basically, uh, I stopped that, and cause, cause I had a better idea. I told my dad that I don't want anything uh, for my sixth birthday. So I made a mistake. It was my fifth. Like I planted five trees, cross. So for my sixth birthday, I didn't want any gifts okay. from my parents. I said, let's take six. What are these things called? I I forgot the name, but co. You know, it's uh, like, yeah, it's a bird. It, it's bird, not a bird. But, uh, no. exactly. Yeah, it's a type of bird. I forgot the name. I used to yeah. know, but I forgot the name. Is it dove? No? No, no. no. It's not dove, yeah. It's a type of bird. And basically, we decided to do it in the mountains of Halabja, you know, because mm. uh, of what happened to it. It was chemically attacked by mm. Saddam Hussein and yeah. everyone. Ali Kinyai, yeah. And it was sad and because all the animals, they died, mm. like, because of the, like, chemical. That th so I decided to do that because there were like no more there. It was like kind of empty and stuff. Mm. Sure, there were like a little left, but I wanted there to be more. Yeah. So, so for like each of my birthdays, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, I'm still doing it. Uh, I free them in the mountains of Halabja. Like we wanted to do like it differently. My dad said let's do fox, uh, like a fox, mm. but I was like no, no, no. Let's still do like those types of birds. So. If I understand you right, like for every year you, you go one year older, you take yeah. the number of the age exactly. you are. Exactly. Uh. The age I am, I free like, okay. so this year it was 13, I freed 13. That's amazing. Yeah. So you, because I was in the bazaar here in Slemani and I saw, I don't know if that's what you mean, but I saw the market where you have animals yeah, yeah, yeah. under the bridge, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I, I, like, yeah, I don't support I that. Like I felt... Because those are for pets, right? Those animals, or yeah, yeah, yeah. you buy them. But, but still, still, like the yeah. the way they are being held, is not like normal. I don't. Yeah, I it's don't. So, support yeah, them. was it there you bought them? The those? No, 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 no. Okay. I no, I didn't buy them there. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have like my aunt's husband. Like uh -huh. he works like in that type of topic and stuff. Okay, so okay. he has a shop, and like we always get it from him. Yeah, like yeah, ask okay. him, and then he like gets it for us so yeah. That's amazing. yeah but what hurts me even more mm -hmm. in the mountains when we free them like honestly i've seen videos like hunters hunters mm -hmm. they like hunt them and kill them which i don't like that's why every time like i free them so they get more reproduce and like hopefully yeah. there's more that's amazing how, how do you get this idea of co like Basically, I was like, you know, I was watching TV again and like the videos I saw because me, I love history and stuff. Yeah. I, like I want to know more about, you know, my country's past, my country's history. Like I'm still learning, so I don't know like no. everything. 
but I was watching it and like I was watching videos because there are videos, you know, of like the people that have been affected. My dad's cousin, she has actually like been severely affected. One of her kids died in her hands, like in that chemical thing. Thankfully, she made it out. But yeah, I've seen those. And then I was like the animals too, like because I've seen the dead animals. Like, you know, photographers, they take, and I've seen it. So I was like, hey, how about like, an idea I told my dad how about let's free like th like these types of birds let's free them so they get more and more you know what I mean yeah. um, like throughout the years did you I, I know that you did but like I still want to ask like do you feel that you have made a difference both both in the society as whole but also just a difference in inspiring one person it's enough, like, you know what I mean? How do you feel, like, in the levels, different levels? Me, basically, personally, personally, like, around, like, it was, like, three weeks ago, I told my dad, I was like, hey, we, I don't think, I told him, I was like, I don't think, I'm going to get you to your question right now, but I'm just like, I was like, I don't think that we're making a difference, you know, by doing these videos, like, they don't listen, the government doesn't listen, like, I keep on making videos and don't listen, and my dad told me, for example, you know the people in the past that, like, that were the, like, the government before, we didn't, like, know, like, what they did, mm. yep, let's say Sheikh Mahmoud, like, if you know him, we don't know what he did in the past, like, people are saying, oh, he's, like, very good and stuff, but we don't know what he exactly did, and my dad, like, he told me that this, it's, like, for history, so I post these videos, the people in the future, the people in the future, they know that this is how our government has been. Mm. Get what I'm saying? Yeah, so exactly. like, this is for history. So I believe, I believe if I keep going, mm. eventually I'm gonna like make a difference. So I still have hope, you know? Yeah, I understand. And do you have like other girls in your age or younger than you or older than you that, that like, come to you or talk with you and say that you have opened their minds or or that you have inspired them like uh, thinking about the environment or the or the government personally not kids but not like because like you know kids my age they usually have they don't like they're shy because like most of them have been shy but then they've came up to me but yeah there has been one girl she was like oh i want to be like you and stuff and i was happy about that but there was this other guy and he was older like he was like in his 20s and stuff and like he was like i'm so happy to see you like keep going and everything and that like that of course is gonna make you happy yeah. so yeah about a few people they have like when i go to crowded places mm. a lot of people tell me which is why i keep going but can you go to places like malls and stuff without being bothered or do they oh. i don't think it's be like it's being bothered if like many people like take pictures i'm still not bothered but malls and stuff because like like not many people but for example let's say if i go so you know like in kurdistan they like when it's nodos they go to mamara and like place so whenever i go like a lot of people take pictures but i love it like yeah, yeah. but i know i, I guess uh, every person in the world needs their own time exactly someday so, like at some point do you feel that you can live a normal life or is it is it like honestly i think right now my life is normal like okay. there's no difference between me and a random person honestly okay. um you talked about a little bit about it but do you feel that powerful people and influential people both government but also maybe famous people um influencers singers whatever um listen to you and um, are affected by what you're doing like i've met a couple of singers and stuff and they've told me yeah they like they watch my videos and things and like some you know like uh, some people in the parliament mm. yeah some candidates in the parliament like i've talked to them and they watch my videos too and like they were like one of them said can you make vi like a video about me mm. you know but yeah some of them yeah. Okay. Final question. What, what would you like to be in 10 years? Or just talk about yourself in one perspective, but also like how would you dream 
Kurdistan look in 10 years? Or maybe more years if you feel that it's not uh, realistic in 10 years, but in the future. First of all, in the future, I want to be a good leader. Yeah, I said that. Second, I want Kurdistan to have the best education system. That's right. Look, it might, like many people might say, it might not be possible, but I think in the future, if we, because it's been 30 years, the same people have been running the government. Same people. It's time for new faces. It's time to see new people. So that's why I think younger people should also have the chance. And hopefully, because education is a big thing for me, and I know I said it a lot of times, but I want Kurdistan to have one of the greatest education systems in the world and just overall be a great country. And I agree with you and I support your thoughts as well and I hope you are successful. Uh, thank you so much for... Thank you so much for letting me be on your channel. And I hope that you just find a peaceful like, future and, and nothing uh, yeah. happens. And you can keep going. Thank you so much. Thank you.